this video goes with the problem that's on the back of the rock paper scissors lab i'm here in the media center with some students that just learned that the numbers on the books tell you where the books are located okay so this is a chi-squared full problem i'm just going to take you through every step of the problem so you can see a full example um, you can use this to check or go over it in class but you can use to check so we start out look at the information we have 175 adults uh, this is our data this is called the observed data f sub zero which is observed and so we're trying to they're trying to show if uh, level of income or income level is uh, independent of level of schooling so we have three levels of schooling three levels of income so the first thing you do is you write a hypothesis saying that they are not related by you saying independent so it's a statement of independence it doesn't matter if so level of income and highest level of schooling are independent you could also say that level of income is the is independent of highest level of schooling it doesn't matter but the keyword is independent and then the alternative hypothesis is the same thing are not independent that is the difference not independent don't write dependent so that's h1 that's alternative Construct the expected frequency table, calculator, or by hand from above. Remember, if you're if you're doing this by hand, you need to know the row totals and the column totals and the overall total. So this would be 45. I know the overall total is 175. So if I were doing this by hand or I had to verify something, I'd be taking 68 times... 45 divided by 175 and that would give me my there but I'm not going to do that I'm going to use a calculator so go to matrix and this is a three row three column so it's a three by three so I'm going to put the numbers in I'm not putting the totals in And then I'm going to run my chi-squared test. So to run the chi-squared test, stat, test, I have it in A, it's going to put the expected in B. So if I want to find out if my number here, 68 times 45 divided by 175, that should be 17.5. I'm going to go to my... Back to the matrix where the observed values are. And there's my number. So I can verify it. Sometimes it'll say verify that it's 17.5. Okay, so back to the calculate the chi squared. It says degrees of freedom is four says show work verify with the calculator so I know it's four and that's from the rows minus one so there's three rows times the columns minus one three columns so that's basically two times two that's where the four comes from write the rejection inequality for a five percent significance level okay so rejection inequality chi squared calculated greater than the chi-squared from the table. So I'm going to go up here to the table, and I have four degrees of freedom, and I'm calculating at a 5% level. So my table value is 9.49. So that's my rejection inequality. If this is true, also the same equivalency would be if the p-value 
is less than the percent here. So the P is less than 0.05. Notice these signs are opposite. Then our result would be to reject the null, reject H0. If it's not true, we fail to reject and we accept that they're independent. So if this is true, we're saying they're not independent. Okay, so I always write this first. Notice I didn't write my non-chi-squared stuff down at all yet. Now I can actually test it. So the chi-squared is 15.8. So 15.8 is greater than 9.49. And the p-value here is 0 0.00327. And that is less than 0.05. So both of these lead us to say that because this is true, our conclusion is reject H0 and we accept H1. And the reason, it always asks for a reason, the reason is because the chi-squared calculated is greater than the chi-squared from the table. So the only thing that changes as you go further down this list is your rejection inequality and your p-value. So p should be less than 0.01, the rejection inequality for 1% at 4 degrees of freedom is 13.28. So as you can see, our conclusion, we would the chi-square doesn't change. We would still reject at that level. At 10%, the only thing that changes is the 7.7. And we definitely reject P less than 0.1. That's, both of those things are going to be true. So this initial setup always should happen before you try to answer, your, give a conclusion. Okay, so I, I actually spread this out because you're gonna be doing this on your own so that you don't even mess with the, the P and the chi-squared until you have all that set up um, and what you do there. So our answer, whenever it says make a conclusion, it's always reject or fail to reject. We don't say accept and all, it's fail to reject. So our, in the end, if we reject, we accept H1. And here, if we fail to reject, we accept H0. It's the full chi-squared 